Shalom. Welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Delmar, together with my co-host Mark Ronich, a statewide news service. And where are we now, Mark? Well, now we're in Koksaki Correctional Facility <laughs> All right. in Greene County. What did you do now, Mark? Well, I almost did something. That was, <laughs> I'm hoping I won't be here for long. Right. Uh, the, the, sh the shortest tenure. Uh, but, you know, I really wanted to show that the uh, correctional, the Department of Correctional Services really goes out of their way to really help Jewish inmates. Uh, you know, bad things happen to good people sometimes, but, you know, for the continuity of keeping the religion, you know, in the people's hearts. And here you know, on Sukkot, they build a sukkah for the Jewish inmates, and we have four Jewish inmates with us uh, today. So, uh, and this is, Rabbi Simon, this is a prison that you visit regularly to uh, talk to the inmates and maybe do some counseling, whatever you might do, but I also know that you give them the Jewish press. That's so important. That's a good yes. thing. Well, so, we have time okay. to do extra reading over here. So might as well something positive Jewishly, and, but um, we and, always try to give them a little bit Jewish, a little bit of a uh, semblance once a month of uh, Judaism and Hasidicism and Jewish press is part of that. But um, David, why don't we do, we are in a sukkah as you could see, and that mm -hmm. is again incredible that this is a maximum security prison and still they allow us to, the Jewish inmates, to keep their Judaism as best as they can. Right, so we have David Carpenter and uh, who is from Sullivan County. Mm -hmm. uh, and what town in Sullivan County? Uh, Rock Hill. Rock Hill. Oh, there's a Chabad in Rock Hill now. All right. <laughs> so I wanted to uh, introduce David. And uh, David, what does this uh, sukkah mean to you in terms of keeping your Jewish character in place? It's a very vital uh, aspect of keeping my Jewishness here. Because, uh, as you see, they worked, we worked hard to get it up here. We, we jumped through loops to get it here. But they were very good in helping us to, to have this on a yearly basis. They work very hard with us, and they always make sure that we're taken care of. Okay, and uh, we have Andrew Bono, who's here. What's going on? Uh, Andrew, uh, you're originally from Arizona, but you were in Utica before yes. you made a pit stop here. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Small hiatus. Extended one. Yeah. Extended so how long one. are you in for here? Um, I'm currently finishing up a uh, six-year sentence. Six right years. Yeah. Okay. Well, hope you never come back again once you leave. You are not the only one. I hope I don't ever. Okay. Come back. So t tell me about your Jewish background and what this sukkah means to you. Well, to be honest with you, once I came to prison, I never really had a religion. I had my my foster parents were Jewish, they were they were Italian, which I don't know how that works, but what, Italian not, Jews? yeah, they're Italian Jews. Okay. Yes. I'm not familiar with their background exactly. I was only with them for seven years, but once um once I came to prison I decided to really look into it and explore it the closest thing Jewish Judaism yeah. and explore the closest thing that I've ever had to religion in my life. And so far I've been looking to Dave for his advice <laughs> and as much teaching as possible as well as the rabbi as he comes every Thursday. Well, is it every third Thursday? Yeah. Okay. So okay. it's so far. So far, I'm not. I'm not anywhere close to where Dave is, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Mm -hmm. And, and help, this, yeah. this is shocking to me because it's. On one hand, they make such a big deal about security, in a prison, and on the other hand, to make sure that inmates' religious rights are kept sacred, they allow us to have this. Well, you know, it's interesting so it's, that. There's only three walls, that there's no door, that there's no fourth wall. Rabbi, can you tell us about what that significance is? They were hoping is? the prison was like that, three <laughs> walls <laughs> and no door. <laughs> they they well, that would be nice. I mean, <laughs> that would be a nice uh, idea for the prison, for them, I guess. Oh, but sure, uh, but uh, really, ultimately, what is a little bit of a lean-to? That's enough. They have two walls plus a little bit. Here we have three complete walls. But the whole point of sukkahs is that it should be a temporary structure, meaning that even though regular right people have a nice home and if it rains, who cares? It's going to, you're protected, you lock your door, and I'm protected. But once a year for a week, we sit in this little hut, and again, if it rains in, the, 
it's going to rain in. It's not going to protect us. And the door is open because anybody could come. But, but it's also for security reasons. The prison officials told you that there couldn't be a fourth door or yeah, fourth wall? Yes, yeah, sometimes people, this is a kosher sukkah with three yeah. walls. That's what I wanted to say. But you're right, we are in prison and they don't like people locked behind doors not knowing what you guys are doing here. And again, just like he says that they are security conscious and even though they're very facilitating and helping us build a sukkah and having a little of an esrog and having kosher food provided for the inmates, on the other hand, it is secure and they just have to be sure everybody is safe and sound so they just want to be able to look inside to be sure everything is kosher as we say in the business <laughs> okay. but uh, the idea is that wherever <clears throat> we are and i think these prisoners know more than anybody the inmates know that who knows what the world could bring and that's what hashem says you know we're worried about the food you say well what do i worry about i'll just go to the supermarket tomorrow morning but this is the time of harvest and that we're going to show about the four different types of vegetation. And that teaches us that, you know, the farmer doesn't get paid once a week, like a paycheck with people, or once every two weeks that people have it. It's once a year. And if there's a drought in the harvest time, you mm -hmm. get nothing. So that's the way people live. But nowadays, like again, the supermarket's open. I got a strong house. Who needs God for protection? remind us whatever happens you need God for protection and God again Hashem is providing for all our needs so that's one of the few lessons that we can get by sitting in this look so even though it's solid as you guys say but it is rickety and obviously it's not as solid as a normal house <laughs> and uh, we have also here with us John Perrier, Perrier. and John uh, can you tell us what this means for you and your Jewish background Actually, I just, like Andrew, I just started this religion um, to get into a different religion to see, because I know there's many different religions, but this is one of the oldest ones. So I wanted to go back, more or less back in history and learn from, it's like Christ was born in year zero or one. So it's way before that. So it up brings a different meaning to <coughs> other religions. And you know what the the number for this new year is, right? 57... Seven, 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 79. Seven, five, seven, seven. Okay. Uh, Goes back a long year. Yeah. 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 Oh, 6,000 years. Where do you come from, and John, where do you come from? I grew up in a small town called Altona, uh, oh. which is up by Clinton Frank Correctional Franklin Facility. Franklin County, yeah. Clinton County. Franklin, or oh, is it Clinton or Franklin? Clinton County. Clinton, okay. Um, uh, uh, and you grew up there without <coughs> much going on around there, right? Uh, not really. It's a, you know, a small town. Uh, nowadays, to have a good job, you either work in a factory or come a CEO. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, so how are you, how is this sukkah impacting you and your soul and what um, you're trying to find in Judaism. Um, we just watched a mo kind of a movie on it. Um, what it helps me is how one of, the, like one of the actors turned around and he was praying not to be anger, to keep his anger in control. So this kind of, you know, we can learn certain different ways to control our anger and with different religions, it shows different meanings to certain religious. Okay. And also with us is Nelson Burgos, and I'm surprised. And were you, you from the Bronx? Well, I was in the Bronx. You're from the New York City area. Well, I lived in the Bronx when I was young. And we moved out of Bronx in '66 to Rockland County, where I went to high school. On and off for about a year and a half, and um, I ended up coming here in '74. And coming here, yeah, to Kaksaki in '74. '74. I mean, this is, this is my second bid, but um, and I had got released, and I ended up get, getting a new one. And um, it wasn't until like 2007. Well, during those these years, I mean, it's a lot of solitary time, so you get a time to reflect and to think about the things that you messed up on in life. And um, 
in 2007, after a year of seriously talking to a Orthodox Jew that was with me in Sullivan, he find, I've, I decided at that point that I needed to look more into Judaism, and that's what I have chosen since then to become. And um, when, if and when I get out there, they actually go through the actual conversion for, you know, doing the big and all that. So, like, uh, I've been reading a lot. Um, as Dave will tell you, I probably lead more than I should be. <laughs> um, I had delved into things like the Zohar and Kabbalah and stuff like that. But it's on the super, I mean, for me, I'll be honest with you, it's superficial because I know it takes years and years and years of reading and understanding. You can read the same thing over a thousand times and get thousands of different pieces of information out of it. And uh, I, I think it's beautiful because it teaches you, not only does it teach you about the religious aspect to be humble, to be a good person, to always show what it is that it is that you're about, not just say what you're about, but to show. And I think that Judaism is one of the things that you, it goes by deeds, what you do, not by what you say. Mm -hmm. And there are, unfortunately, a lot of that just like they say, and they talk a good one, but they don't walk the walk. Right. This religion walks the walk. Okay. And, and that's what I like about it. It's honest, and it, and it helps you grow as a person. I mean, it can, it can do nothing but make you a better person. How has, now, you said you were in Sullivan Correctional Facility in your first tour of duty? Or oh, whatever. no, I was here on the first you tour of duty. Oh, you said something about Sullivan. I was there on this on this bit here. I was in Sullivan, and that's when I came into a I had a really good friend. Okay. Fortunately, he's out there now. He's in South America. He went back to his country. He went to, uh, I think it was Columbia he was at. Yeah. And he was an Orthodox Jew, and we sat and we talked. We talked, I mean, we spent almost all our rec time, free time talking to each other. And as I asked so, him questions, I became more interested in it. Something drew me. How has the prison system changed since 74? Because wow. 74 was like, <laughs> it, it was all you know, year, It was three time. years after Attica. Yeah. yeah. So, how is, I mean, would you have had a sukkah in the late 70s? Oh, no. Oh, no. I mean, they, the, the, as far as a, a Jewish community in, the, in, in any, well, fortunately, I, I mean, I've been in only this one, in, the last time I was here, it was just time in, in, in Hudson, and they didn't really have, it wasn't really, a, or you had probably Jewish inmates in there, but they weren't, it wasn't an organization that I know, maybe I guess a rabbi would come maybe periodically. But on this trip around, it's, I guess, it's more prevalent. You know, you get to see it in every facility that I've been in. I just came from Attica, for, you know, this time from Attica, from t two years there. And um, we would, last time, last year, I spent time in the sukkah out there, in the, you know, what they call the Ponderosa, which is outside of the gym. So it's a big outside yard, similar to like the big yard they have out here, but it's, they call it the Ponderosa. And um, I enjoyed it. I was, it was an experience that we, uh, I can't. Remember, I'm trying to remember the Gold, Goldstein or Greenberg. That's in there from from Buffalo. Yeah. Greenberg, Rabbi, Rabbi Greenberg. Greenberg. He came in, beautiful person. I mean, and you could just see, you could just see the reverence, the glow come from him, and he was just somebody that you want to be, you know, somebody that you want to learn from because he he just like he was the like the eminence of you know it's like you couldn't help but want to learn from him, and. Um, he, I, I would sit and ask him questions and stuff like that. And he asked me, he says, well, when am I getting out? I says, well, when, they, when Hashem decides that I can come out, you know, I guess. And um, he says, do you plan on coming to Buffalo? I said, well, I would like to visit. You know, I mean, I'd like to visit him if I come out. I mean, how now it's cold out, but I'd like to go visit him. And because like, um, he, like I said, he was the kind of individual that, he never asked you, did you, you know, do you want to learn? People just came to him and asked him because he was that kind of a person that you wanted to learn from him. He was a very open, very honest individual, very knowledgeable, um, and it was just a pleasure. He was a pleasure, and he so he was the one that actually did the sukkah with us last year, uh -huh. and it was in May. I mean, it, it just I just felt glowing when I left there. Really, you didn't yeah. want to leave? I mean, <laughs> no, it's just that they made us leave, but you know, we could have stayed there, but he had, he had to leave as well, because you know, he can't stay as long as he'd like to, but I don't know how long he would like to stay, but uh, I mean, they're all limited as far as how long he can stay. Do you like the regiment of prison life? Um, that you have some fixed... It's structured, believe structure. me, it's structured. Um, the, the trick is, you know, as soon as possible to find something to do to occupy your time, because if you let yourself fester and... You, in the confines that they have, it's not really good for uh, the mental, mental. Right. But I said physical, emotional. I mean, 
being in the box or something like that, I can see where guys would have just problems. Just let me interrupt. In the, box. the box means solitary confinement. Solitary confinement. Just for our special audience. housing unit. Special housing unit. Shoe. Shoe. Yeah. And um, see, I knew that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, You're right at home, here, Mark. <laughs> and to be there, I mean, you have nothing to do but listen to other people yell and scream on the on on the game because they have nothing else to do, and <laughs> either that or read, write letters, or sit there and, and ponder about things that you messed up in your life or things that you would like to do or could have done differently. Right. And um, a lot of times you sit back there and I'd ask Hashem, I says, says, I know I messed up. You know, I says, you know, I, I says, and the thing is to be able to humble yourself and ask for help. You know, even if you, even, even if you are a learned individual within the religion, I mean, there comes a time when you ask for help, ask for strength. And, 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 and not to be, the thing is that it's a, uh, that's a punk thing to do that no it's not I mean because if it wasn't Hashem you wouldn't be here in the first place well, at I, least on this, this planet <laughs> I think so Mark I wanted to point out to our audience is just that in a positive sense of course prison is not a fun place to say no. the very least on the other hand if the inmates use it as a positive experience and, yes. and reflect and inside and what they're doing and especially with their Yiddish, uh, Jewish uh, soul, the neshama, that they actually have the opportunity to use this experience to grow. Yes, so uh, are there other Jewish inmates besides the four of you? Uh, yeah. There is in Kuksaki. Yeah. Well, there are a, a population that yes. have uh, signed up to be Jewish, to, to participate, but uh, generally we're the more active group. Okay, yes. but the three other ones are you pretty more active? They're, they're, I guess three that couldn't make it right today. Now. They had no, various other engagements. No, but I just mean engagements. in general that we. Yeah, yeah, we have a group that that are you know, up towards about ten people. Sometimes it varies though because people come and go from here. So well, one one month. Well, <laughs> yes. Well, so in they India, come we back. all wish to go. <laughs> Definitely the uh, smallest demographic within the prison system. Yes. Yes. Well, Without three, a doubt. Three. Anywhere in in any facility, with the exception of uh, what is that? Sullivan, uh, Shawanga, type no, the, uh, the where area. the kosher kitchen is. That's Greenhaven. Green 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 Haven. Haven. Yeah. With the exception of it's Greenhaven, we are the smallest demographic in any prison. Yes. In New okay. York State. Because the, um, the as of 2010, 3.6 percent of the prison population was Jewish. Well. Yeah. So that's a small amount. That's right. A, you know, I, yes. And also it's difficult. Most of it's Protestant and Catholic. Yes, but yes. In, they did a breakdown right. that I, you know. But I also find that all the different religious leaders here do help anywhere they can. That's true. They, they, that's they true. help us out. They, they don't say, not my, not my job. It does not exist here. Yeah. They, they go greatly. And also I must speak up for the rabbis that come and take their time, even though it's their job. Their job can also be just sitting here and doing the little as possible. But they, they care, they work hard for us, they, they show that somebody out there, to many people that are here that have nobody, that we, we are cared for, we are loved, uh, Hashem has brought His love to us, and, and it Thank is shining you. through the rabbis. Every place I have gone, every different institution I have gone in, has been, they have been very active, beyond active. They've been, you know, their heart and soul goes into this. And you've seen a progression in terms of more of a connection that the correctional facilities are trying to, or the Department of Correctional Services is trying to um, make this easier uh, for being someone yes. Jewish. And it's also, yes, yes. yes, it's also a learning experience for them. Yeah, for the Department of Corrections. For the Department of Corrections, because, mm -hmm. listen, face it, we are a unique group of uh, people, and uh, we have our needs that many Christian or Protestant people would not understand, just like we would not understand them. We wouldn't understand why they, what their needs or wants are. And right now I see a, a very great improvement in what they do for us. So what else do they do besides kosher meals and the sukkah? What else do you well for find Hanukkah? That's so we have well we have for Hanukkah we have services, yeah. services we when well, we can have. Uh, they allow you to light candles here. Uh, yes, uh, for Hanukkah we do. Yes, we do. Okay. And, yes, we do. And, and even on Christmas Eve, which is kind of interesting. Sometimes. Okay. 
<laughs> but um, no, they do. They make sure we, we are taken care of and what we need uh, for religious aspects. Uh, Again, they're, they're David, let active. me interrupt over here to just explain what that meant to your Christmas Eve. Because last year, Christmas Eve came out on Hanukkah. Yes. And there's, <laughs> obviously, there's 24 hours. They mentioned CO, just again for our audience. That means correction officers. If you want to play English, it's prison guards. Yeah. Obviously, it's 365 days, 24 7 job. They don't just close up the place right. for no. 10 hours. No. So, obviously, like you say, uh, most or probably all are Christians, and who doesn't want to be with your family on right, Christmas Eve if you're a Christian? So, there's a skeleton crew. So, they have special needs, and you need some officers watching, <laughs> watching them even on Christmas Eve, which comes out on Hanukkah. And that's what David's saying. They bent over backwards to put somebody on duty in order to help facilitate them to uh, the Jewish inmates mm -hmm. in order to celebrate Hanukkah. And that's what he was saying. And what happens on Passover, which is Pesach, really Pesach tumultuous is, for everyone? Yeah. Pesach yeah. Uh, can be very interesting uh, at times, but they really do really pursue and go out of our way, uh, out of their way, I'm sorry, to, to help us out. To make sure we get what we need, we get special packages from various organizations to give us the you know, matzahs, uh, the food stuffs that we are needed and uh, that are needed and everything. Macaroons. Uh, okay. Not so much macaroons <laughs> anymore. Not so much macaroons. No no but no. things are changing. Uh, because no. because they, they taste. I, I love them in the street. Yeah. yeah, I love macaroons. No, no. In the street. What's the no what, what's happening now is that they they change the available items that we can get. Yeah, yeah. Why and, uh, that's a good question. Certain outli outside organizations are banned from sending singles to the prison, but it's <laughs> okay. It's just um, but I was gonna I was gonna add on something David said. It's nothing to do with almonds or anything. Or no, 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 nothing it's just like that. Coconuts just coconuts no. Different nuts distributors and come and go. Inside politics, sometimes. it changes as it goes. Every okay. security and administration makes different decisions every time. Right, so. they they have to okay. look at it from different perspectives. I remember in Sullivan. The Jewish organization had a fundraiser, and they, what they would do, I guess it was a bakery around the area in Sullivan, where they would actually have, um, they would bring in halal, you know, bread, and they would bring in uh, pastries that were made, kosher, kosher made. And um, the community down there, as far as, like, the inmate community, as far as down there, is a lot more intensive than it is up here. But uh, um, I guess the location of Sullivan is right yeah. there, right there. Just and, for people, yes, again, just to yes. qualify, Sullivan County is the Catskills. Yes. So that's, yes when, that's where all your David, you came resorts. from. Resorts. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, well, that's a, uh, so the Porsche yeah. Belt. The yeah. Porsche Belt. They come up for the summertime. They, uh, you know, but enjoy the vacation. staying where you would have been more comfortable. Uh, not necessarily. Okay. Um, but this is, Hashem puts me where he wants me. Okay. And sometimes, uh, quite honestly, I didn't want to go. But uh, he put me there anyway, and once I learned how to live in the particular, because every prison has its rules, its little uh, ways of doing things, once you learn to live with it and within it, it, it can be okay. It can be a, a life, a hard, hard life, but it isn't terribly hard. And they do have many aspects of help for people here. And also religion too. I, I see that the yeah, you know, like I said before, everybody helps out here okay. as best they so can. We're wrapping up, Rabbi Simon. Yeah, we, I just wanted when to, we're having a good time, well, we, I yeah, guess yeah, time flies over here. We want them to say a bracha over. Yeah, the sure. Lulav and Esro, do you want them to stand up and say the bracha? It'd be or? better if they stand up if you have okay. a possible. Yeah, we'll say Lulav and Esro, and then we'll have a cookie to say yeah, something, right. a blessing yeah. in the uh, good. All right. You know the brother Lula. Or do a shake, shake it up Zadie over here. Shake it a certain way. Yeah, right, well, right. 
shake to the right. Right to your right. Of course, we don't want to right. shake someone. Yeah, don't shake. <laughs> shake left. left. And then we turn oh, wait a minute. Wait no, a minute. Up, up. Up. Well, well, turn around here. Everybody does it a little bit. Yeah, I know. Okay. There are different okay. customs. Okay. You are right. And down. And yeah. Over your right shoulder. Okay. All and right, now, good. Let Andrew do this also. Andrew. And you want to hold a little bit? All right, just shake it. You said the blessing, so all you have to do is shake it now. Okay. You know. so I'm going to get out of the way, so. <laughs> Me also. Okay, go forward. Shake it to the right. 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 Yeah. See, actually, to, to, the left. to the left. Up. Shake it up. Shake it down. Yeah. Up. In between. And shake it down. There you go. Over your right shoulder. Over your right shoulder. Right shoulder. Right. Just a little bit, Mark, you know, because I'm a rabbi, so I, of course, well, have, to, to I have to say something over here. But, um, Not many that's, get injured in here, don't yeah, worry. Yeah, no, so you hit someone in the head over here. I know, you almost got me yeah, in the head. I know. Well, you <laughs> when we first opened up, we had to do we, The tables weren't in here, so, like, we had more we had room, room to do it. Okay. <laughs> There's four directions and up yes, and down. Up and down. Six six directions, directions, actually, you're waving away all the bad spirits. And all up, down, all around. It should only be for a good year again. Rosh yes. Hashanah was just, the new year was two weeks ago. Yes. So yep. we're still living with that. And um, also there's some significance to idea also, like I said before, the harvest. Even though we're not farmers, but if the farmers aren't farming, we're not eating. So we want a That's good true. harvest time also. So also I want to thank Rabbi Gulak for uh, giving us... Uh, uh, Presenting us with this uh, feast of cookies Good. from Oberlanders. There you go. And uh, we say a bruch on this. Right, everybody take a. We, well, we say two. Two. One right. for the cookie and one for the right, mitzvah. Right. Okay. You put that down. You, you put the little bit. Take and, a cookie. Take a cookie. Okay. Everybody take a cookie. Okay. I'll take one too. You have one. You have no one's on a diet. I hope no. here. Okay. Uh, not, not anymore. anymore. Not yeah. anymore, right. I'm anymore. on a diet too, but all right. Okay. All right, we'll say two blessings, one for the cookie okay. and then one for the sukkah. Everybody together. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam Borei minei mezonos Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam Asher kiddishanu b'mitzvosav Bitsi Banu Leche Bazuka. Mmm. Look good. All right. Well, thank you all very much for taking time out of your busy day <laughs> to come here. Thank you for coming. Yeah. And thank we you really both. appreciate hearing thank your you insights. Thank you for giving us a change of pace in here. Okay. <laughs> well, I appreciate the uh, insights that you were able to give us as to what comes what goes on behind bars I, I would just like to say also too that we also join the world in shaking the love and praying to Hashem even here in prison mm -hmm. that his love comes here all right and it Don't, comes in many ways Rabbi wrap it up Dave you gave the best note over there that even though, and people don't understand, it looks nice we're sitting in sukkah, but there's barbed wires oh, all yes. around, there's guards all around, and you can feel pretty darn lonely and depressed. But when you're with Hashem, mm -hmm. Torah and the Mitzvahs, and with friends and rabbis, that gives your spirits uplifted, yes, that you can even feel free yes, it does. even inside of a prison. So I no, think you hit the, the right note on that. No Jew is alone. That's mm -hmm. it. So you're together with every Jew and no... The barbed wire and no guards and no yes. machine guns can stop you in the spiritual sense from connecting to all Jews around. Thank you very much to the prison system. Right. Thank you very much to Mark and Rabbi Gulek for, and all the officials in the prison system for allowing us to come in and sharing to, to all our viewers uh, the Jewish life inside of a New York State prison. Okay. Thank you.